Okay, we're uh, looking at conductors and insulators and uh, mostly the idea of polarization here during this episode of electrostatics. Uh, in the first one, then this charge, this uh, metal sphere here is sitting on an insulated stand so that we can put charge on it. Uh, if you did have charge over here, some built up charge, either negative or positive, uh, the types of materials that would allow you to conduct and move charge into the sphere would be um, the form we call conductors uh, and those are usually some types of metal most types of metal are conductors uh, they're usually conductors of both heat and electricity um, <clears throat> and then um, the insulators, the things that would stop it would be typically your non-metals which would be uh, things like glass uh, rubber uh, anything made of silicon, um, any of those types of materials that uh, are made up of things of the right hand side of the periodic table. Um, gases are typically not very good conductors as well. Uh, usually metals, uh, solids, uh, some uh, liquids like salt water is a very good conductor although pure water is not. So H2O is not a great conductor but when you mix in uh, other types of things like salts which have metals in them uh, you get a good conductor. Okay now in terms of the way charge works if you look at this one on the left these negative charges are all built up in various spots and they're staying in those same spots. So that one's there, this little piece of charge is here, this little piece of charge is here. Uh, the reason they're not moving around or interacting is that this material is an insulator. So this charge really has no easy way to try to move around and this one can't either. And so they can't really interact very well and so you don't get uh, the charge spread out over an insulator. The charge is always uh, stuck in one place. Uh, if you take a balloon and uh, actually rub it with some fur and get it charged, if you bring that side that you charged next to your arm, you'll feel the charge on the balloon. But if you then flip the balloon around, you won't feel anything because all the charge you put on the balloon is still in that one basic spot. Now, with a material like this, when you see the charge all spread out at the surface outside, that indicates you have yourself a uh, conductive material. So this would be made of some kind of metal typically and this might be like a balloon, a uh, piece of styrofoam, something that did not conduct very well. Now the reason that happens is if you try to put all the little charges together in the middle here, they repel from each other. So they all try to get as far away from each other as they can and the farthest they can get away from each other is for them all to go to the surface. So anytime you have a metal conductor in a spherical or round shape, you'll find, um, actually anytime you have a metal conductor, you'll find the charge will be at the surface of that conductor, whatever the shape of that conductor is. Okay, so uh, anytime you see them spread out like that, this is a conductor. Anytime you see them stuck in one place like this, that's an insulator. All right, now, um, in specifically in conductors, usually this works best in conductors, but it'll work in anything to a certain extent. Uh, we can uh, polarize the charge. Now, all that means is we're going to create two separate poles, one pole a positive and one pole a negative. So if you look at this first case, I've got a balloon. I've charged it negatively. Now, that sphere is metal. It's a conductor. Uh, it's on a non-conducting insulating stand, okay? So I can't charge the sphere this way, but what I can do is, since I have a negative charge here, the surface would typically, you know, the material would be made of when it's not charged, uh, equal amounts of positive and negative. Now when you bring that negative charge close to the this side over here of the sphere, you end up with um, a force of repulsion to the electrons. So the electrons go over here and since the electrons are now gone from this side we end up with negative on this side 
and positive on the side closest to the balloon and therefore we have polarized that particular uh, piece of metal. Uh, at the moment if you bring something over here you can feel the charge the imbalance of charge on this side. But now if you take the balloon away we've gotten rid of the balloon over here the charges will go back to their original positions they'll reset uh, and you'll be left with positive and negative everywhere uh, just like we were before. So we did not charge this way. This didn't create a charge on the um, sphere, but it did polarize or separate the charge. Uh, if you do the same thing with a uh, positively charged balloon, something that lacks electrons, then what you'll do is you'll get the negative particles will pull toward the positive charge, and the positive particles will go over here on the other side. And again, you'll get that separation of charge. In this case, it'll be plus or positive charge on the right and negative charge on the left. But again, once you take the balloon away, the balloon's gone, so now the charges will simply, since it's a conductor, they'll spread out. Now, since we have equal amounts, they'll just spread out equally in the conductor. If we did have an excess of one or the other, the excesses would try to go to the outside of the sphere. Okay, so uh, that's uh, how charge works in a conductor and an insulator. Uh, polarization is very useful to us like if we do want to charge uh, this thing by using the charge balloon here we can if we can supply a source or a pathway for electrons to move uh, we can then create a charge buildup so that's what we'll show you when we talk about uh, induction which is a type of charging using that concept and that finishes this episode uh, we'll be moving on to induction and uh, charging by conduction uh, to wrap up our study of electrostatics.